Okay guys, uh, Jeff here on the lowdown. I'm just going to give you today a, a long-awaited head-to-head -head comparison of these two very popular uh, cordless or airless, if you will, uh, framing nailers. So I have here in my left hand, this is the Matabo 21 uh, degree framing nailer and it is an 18 volt. Uh, it does uh, an amazing job. Both of these are mine. I use them both and I'm going to tell you why. I use them both. It's not necessarily 100% uh, accurate, or I guess apples to apples comparison, as the Matabo here is a 21 degree framer and the pass load here is a 30 degree framer. Both have their place and I'll talk about that in a second, uh, but uh, they could be set stacked side by side for some of their features. And today we're gonna be building a simulated wall, one that won't be used for anything other than just this demonstration. And uh, I'm just gonna show you kind of my takes on them both of them are mine again so it's not me saying one is better than the other and all outright buy this one over that one but i'm going to show you why you'd like to consider that and uh, what you have to keep in mind when you're using both of these out in the field so anyway um we'll get into it in just a second so okay so let's go ahead and uh dive into just these head to head on how they work out and the first thing i wanted to do because i think this could settle a lot of the debate for many of you. Um, one thing you'll know about almost every framing nailer out there is that they are beasts. They are monsters. They weigh a lot. They have to. They do a lot of work. And that, uh, that uh, impetus that's needed to drive a nail through two by fours and other material, it, it's significant. So they have to have some beef to them. Uh, but let me show you just real quick head to head. So I'm going to use this little, uh, I use this to measure luggage. I think it's gonna work out great. I haven't tried this yet, so we'll see. But I'm just gonna weigh these so you can get an idea of what that is. Now, this is the, this is the, uh, the um, pass load. And as you can see, even with the full sleeve of nails, full battery uh, complement on board, and then also the butane uh, fuel cell on there, it's weighing it at 7.7 .7 pounds. Now, that sounds like a lot until you compare it to your DeWalt or your your uh, Milwaukee, or in this case, I've got the Matabo, and I'm gonna pull this out here, um, and let's see, oops, I better zero that out, sorry. Zero it, and then we're gonna start over here, okay. So now, as I lift that up, that's coming in at 10.4, so better than two and a half pounds heavier. Now, two and a half pounds, again, to us guys that are out there using the frame and all that, that does not sound like a lot. But uh, two and a half pounds times however many times, you know, you're reaching up ahead above your head to nail something, that two and a half pounds does come at and get you. So, you know, the question is, well, okay, so how does pass load, how does pass load do it when all of these other framers are so heavy? And the uh, answer is actually very simple. Uh, pass load back in 1986 invented the very first uh, cordless uh, framing nailer and what they did was they actually use instead of a ginormous pneumatic uh, air hammer they actually use these guys which is a butane fuel cell so this is actually flammable gas and it uses a combustion chamber in these fuel cells it uh, uses a combustion chamber to then create the you know, little explosion that you need to drive that nail. And that, the mechanism needed for that is a lot smaller than the pneumatic ones you find in a battery or the air. So this by itself is kind of a unique advantage. Uh, the second thing is, is that because it doesn't need all of the energy to come from a power cell, that's the battery. So that's the battery. Um, so much of your weight on these cordless tools comes in that, you know, the, the lithium battery. Now this is a lithium battery, but it's just, the whole purpose for this is to power, and I'm gonna let you hear this, cause you'll hear it, okay? So when you turn this on, you get this on like this, you're gonna hear it. Okay, you hear that? That's actually a fan that's loading up. You can hear that there. That fan is actually, going to expel the gas that comes off of that of the explosion so 
that's really what your your battery is for is to power that little fan and then also provide the spark that then ignites and drives the nail so that's why you're two and a half pounds lighter than you are on the equivalent kind of Metabo cordless here is that you get that now so that to me is an advantage. Uh, weight is an advantage. So the, you're gonna like that. If you want something that's not gonna be as tiring or fatiguing to you all day, you can do that. Second thing that you'll like about it is that when you look at the pass load and how they do their nails, uh, so these are the same three inch nails. Now this is a smooth shank, this is a ring shank, so that, but they're both hot dip galvanized. So it's a little, little different, but the same length, the same weight. And you can see that pass load uses this paper style and then the offset nail head. And therefore you're able to get quite a few more nails in one sleeve, which means you're reaching in your bag less to change out. Now the Metabo, like many of your uh, 21 degrees, use the uh, straight heads like that. And the advantage there, of course, is that you can take one of these out and use your hammer and nail it in just the way you would any others but they're also connected by these plastic sleeves. And uh, these, uh, you know, if you do a lot of them, you're gonna notice when you're cleaning up your job site at the end of the day, you'll see the little shards of this uh, all over the place from, from using those. So anyway, that kind of gives you that in-depth look at the pass load. We'll go through performance in just a second. Um, but let me, let me go through this uh, Metabo. So a couple of things that you'll really like about the Metabo. So it's definitely got that nice ergonomic grip and then this is a nice feature here is that when you turn this on and hopefully you can see that in my camera yeah you can see that green light that comes on there and then on this side you can see that little blue light and i'm going to zoom in on that okay yeah so the blue light right there is telling you what mode it's in if i push that button and it's flashing it's going to shoot instead of having to shoot uh, by pulling the trigger and depressing this it's once you have the trigger depressed and you just bam, 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 you slap your, uh, your point here on the, on the lumber and it, it fires a nail. So it has two different settings and it's got that rapid fire setting. So one, kind of the traditional way, press it up against the lumber, pull the trigger, and two, keep the trigger pulled and then every time you pull, every time you push against the wood, it's gonna fire a nail. So a little more rapid fire. Um, and then of course with the uh, cordless ones, the battery powered like this, this is gonna fire as fast as I can pull the trigger or depress uh, the, the safety here on the front. Whereas occasionally on the pass load, because it does have to load up with that fan that you heard, uh, you, you may not be as fast as you wanna be. So anyway, those are some kind of the head to heads. Let's just see them in action now. Okay, so first I'm gonna go ahead and put the pass load to work and then you're gonna hear that load up again. And one of the things I do like about this uh, pass load is this really aggressive tip here. You're able to grab and it just basically holds, but then as you see, that obviously has no trouble pounding that nail through. And just like that, boom, two nails. Again, we'll switch over here to the uh, Octavo. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, do the end over here. Let's make sure you can see that. Okay. So again, I'm just gonna same same kind of concept here, and they both have no problem driving that. I'm gonna finish this over here. Switch it over here, and we'll go ahead and turn this up. Uh, I don't have this laid out, so I, I don't know if it's going to be 100% plumb or not, but we're going to go ahead and just hum that. Okay, back with the tabo. Alright, so there we have Two of them going head to head uh, like that. Both of them obviously in the two by four world, no problem whatsoever getting it through that nice soft pine. Um, we're gonna go ahead and nail on this top plate. I'm gonna go ahead and just raise it up. 
uh, like this, give ourselves a, that, and you can see my uh, expert framing. I'm gonna point it out just because somebody else will, so I might as well own up to it, but my expert framing led to a miss there. That was my fault, not the gun's fault. So anyway, we'll go ahead and uh, finish nailing up this. I'll put that uh, right where we can see it there. I'm gonna do the first two with this Matabo. And I could get the square out and make sure that's in there, but see, no problem whatsoever going through this material. And then once again, we'll get the uh, pass load out and do it. Now I think, again, Go ahead and just look so you can see the nails are definitely sunk in there deep for both of them. Uh, the Metabo probably a little deeper actually. And so let's just check on our settings to see if they are similar. Both of them have an adjustable depth. You can uh, move this in or out so to sink them however you like. So anyway, that kind of gives you an idea there. Uh, let's come back to this in just a second. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you real quick where that uh, degrees comes into play. So there's two ways to look at this. When you're 21 degree versus a 30 degree, your angle at which you're able to nail. So that's if you want to look at this, this is putting this on a 30 degree angle. And that is for your toenail here. Now, again, one of the things I really like about this pass load is how sharp these things are. Literally, I can put that pretty much anywhere on that two by four. And I should just anchor this down here, so I'm not gonna slide around on me. But, so when I put that in there, it, it's gonna grab. And that, you know, even on that, I'm trying to show just even on the angle there, how crazy that is. You can shoot that on a real far angle uh, because of these sharp, sharp points here. So that's where you're gonna get your 30 degree is the distance you have if you look at that. This angle right here is 30 degrees. And uh, whereas on the Matabo, this is gonna be 21 degrees. And that looks like this. So if you look at your, look at your angle here, you can see that that's a, a smaller angle on that. And in this case, if I wanna you know, toenail this nail in there, you know, I can toenail that on that de degree there like that. So this one I shot a little far as I was just trying to show how that, the cleat on the front of that will grab and allow you to point that anywhere. So anyway, these two uh, guns, if you wanna call them that, I'd say, you know, really, I don't know that there is a real clear winner. Um, I like them both for what they do, uh, but if you wanted to, you know, go based on purely on weight, you you got that pass load. Um, rapid fire and functionality, probably the Metabo. So uh, I'm gonna wrap it up here with just a second. All right guys, so as we wrap it up, uh, our exploration of these two, again, it's just, I, I'm not sure that there's a real clear uh, cut winner on this, but uh, this one definitely will draw a lot of looks just because of the weight. The seven and a half pounds is definitely something that you'd, want to uh, take a look at. They both have uh, very similar features outside of that. Um, and, you know, some people that are new to the idea of the, uh, you know, the little fuel cell, I've had some people try to tell me that the, oh, well, gosh, you, you know, if you run out of fuel cell, you're screwed. Well, th the reality is if you run out of a battery, battery power, and you didn't charge up your battery, same thing, you're screwed. So really, you know, on a job site, you have to, plan for a needing to either recharge a battery or swap out a battery so you know to me that's a moot point there's no difference they sell these pretty much at every every uh, 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 construction stores supply stores uh, big box stores like Home Depot and those and uh, you're able to get them the cool thing is is that when you buy the pass load nails combo they actually will sell it just like this so it actually comes 
with the nails and the fuel cell like that and says right on here fuel and nails well the capacity they tell you and i haven't necessarily have anything to uh you know to actually dispute this but the capacity of this uh, they say is about a thousand to twelve hundred nails well the box is a thousand nails so if you have if you're going to run out of nails you're going to run out of fuel uh, if you have these on site then you don't have to worry about that so really that's a moot point uh, i wouldn't be afraid of having access to the uh, little fuel cells no different than this um, i've found that this four amp hour battery on the matabo and i do know this to be a fact is this will shoot about 600 nails on a four hour a four amp hour so i have a couple of batteries are always charged up if i'm going through more nails than that in the day i'm working probably too hard uh, to you know go through two batteries worth of nails so anyway that that kind of is to me they're both about the same I'd say for functionality this having that rapid fire uh, button on that that does make this one a little more appetizing uh, that way and uh, rapid fire with no load up in that cell so by and large guys I, I don't think you could go wrong uh, definitely cordless is the way to go eliminate the need for that air hose the compressor and a generator on a job site. So these are uh, great, great tools to have and great tools to employ.